Pete Marr here for B-Sides at Austin City Limits 2023, and I'm so stoked to have one of the performers join us, a friend of the program, Declan McKenna. Hello. Greetings. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. How you doing? Great to see you again, man. Yeah, it's great to be back. Yeah. Been a little while, huh? Yeah, we've, we, I think we did a couple of Zooms or something like that. I think that's how long ago it was. Right, like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. We talked about Tire King or uh, yeah, okay. something during the pandemic. I, I remember. What, did we not chat outside lands? We did. That's a, that's a long time ago. Dude. Like when I first started touring America. You have a great memory. Yeah. Because you were like, what, 16, 17 at the time? I think 17, yeah. Yeah. It's been a number of years since you first made your impression here in Austin as well, mm. South by Southwest. Yeah. That's a long time ago. You talk about a long time ago. Mm. Yeah, I love Austin, though. What do you remember about that time? Well, yeah, I, I remember really just taking to the city, and I'd never experienced a festival or anything like, like South by, so... Um, yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. I got kicked out of a few places. I remember just even though I was kind of like working there or doing an <laughs> interview or something, they'd be like, okay, come in here, buddy. Got to be 21. <laughs> like, oh, I'm kind of supposed to be here. <laughs> um, but it was, yeah, I remember it being loads of fun. I probably did like six shows or something like that. We went to like some like house party shows and just like, all different stuff in the city and um yeah very very memorable time for me and here you are a man <laughs> back in austin yeah playing also city limits too which yeah, is quite an iconic festival it is and uh, yeah, i've heard so many good things about it over the years so it's one i've always wanted to get to and yeah i think it's come at a really really nice time bands excited we've got you know some nice surprises in store as well, I think, for this show. So um, I think, yeah, I think it's going to be really cool. I'm curious about your thoughts about how many people will expect Paul McCartney to show up on stage because of your recent TikTok. Hopefully none. Explosion. <laughs> well, Dermot Kennedy. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I hopefully none, but... Uh, to give, to give we, context. Well, yeah, well, this video from like a live stream like two three years ago or whatever of me doing an ABBA cover which people think sounds a bit like Paul McCartney slipping through my it's fingers through, slipping through my fingers is, is, is succeeding on TikTok like no, <laughs> like no other song of mine has well like what other song of mine has slipping through my fingers all the time I try to capture every all, all in time for the release of you know all my new music, which is not doing so well on TikTok, but it's still people like some people. Uh, but it's a funny one. Uh, TikTok just does whatever it wants. You release all, all the music you want, and then it goes. Actually, this is gonna have like a load of views and stuff. And uh, I've seen a lot of different versions now. The AI Paul McCartney version was pretty impressive. I was kind of gobsmacked to say the least really did sound like paul um do you AI hear john L lennon version as well i yeah it wasn't as as convincing but it was good too do, do you hear any similarity because like yeah, i of course i I've, <laughs> I've been copying paul mccartney for years so <laughs> I, I, of course i hear similarities it's like i'm such a big beatles fan but uh you know it's just it's just all very funny to me <laughs> I think it's awesome People, and, yeah. and, 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 and I know you want to be your own individual But you've been shaped by Like you said yeah, exactly. The Beatles and so forth So it's going to come out Yeah and um, I don't know Yeah it's just come at such a funny Funny time The way these things happen Literally by no doing of my own It just kind of started And uh, yeah people want a full version And I'm still deliberating On whether to, to give it to them was ABBA uh, an influence? Uh, like, well, how did you go to like yeah. randomly pick that I song? I love ABBA. I actually, I famously, or not famously, uh, <laughs> have every ABBA album, uh, every like LP, yeah, like proper album from ABBA on vinyl. I'm like a proper ABBA fan. Um, and I've been to see the ABBA Voyage show in London. I was very impressed. They opened with a song which I really love which is The Visitors, which is the opening track of the album, The Visitors. 
And the thing that when people say they don't like ABBA, it really winds me up because I'm like, sure, if you don't if you don't want to dance to like Dancing Queen or like one of the big hits or whatever, they're still great tunes. Like even if you're sick of them, but whatever, that's fine. ABBA are not just about the singles. They really are not. Like they were amazing at just writing full albums worth of great tunes and like that that a song like that the visitors which hot take i think kevin park has taken some influ influence from over the years because it, it 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 just there's just something about it that that says let it happen uh but i just think yeah way more influential than people give credit for way like better music on the whole as well than people give them credit for i just think ABBA are a great band and yeah they have lots of amazing deep cuts which is the thing that I think is impressive about ABBA considering how many hits they had as well right right and a lot of their songs can be done the way you did it acoustically guitar bass absolutely it doesn't and have to be disco like, right that's not even one of their biggest Ooh. songs I guess I guess is it in Mamma Mia or one of yeah the, so I guess it's kind of popular um and it pro you know it's ABBA it's obviously popular but like it's not even like the you know one of their huge hits that you would say but just so resonant, so beautiful, and people love it. So boy. nobody's pressuring you to slip that in there to put it on the album as a last minute. No one's trying to get me to put it on the album, but I will say that Columbia Records definitely want me to record a full version of "Slipping Through My Fingers." Yeah. And I don't know, man. <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the crowd is cheering right now. Yeah. Like, yes, it, he's gonna do it. it. He's gonna do it. The album is not going to be out for a while. What happened to the beach? I don't know. What did happen? So I, I'm so curious. Yes. That's, but Especially that's, from a British person who doesn't, I don't know, does, is beach by, part I of the culture? By, I live by the beach. <laughs> it's different. It's different, but I live by the beach. I'm from California, so my yeah, impression okay. it's of the beach like is... that, but we have beaches. Well, I actually live by a, by a, by a like stony beach, so it's like not, yeah. not the same thing, but... I think a stony beach is actually a more year-round beach than a sandy beach because a sandy beach in the rain is quite difficult. And also, if you go onto a sandy beach like after work, you've got to get rid of the sand. Whereas like a stony beach, you can literally go and sit there like any time of year because it's like, it's like fine. You don't get sand. You don't get anything stuck to you, really. It's not so bad. So there's, you know, it's different, different kind of atmosphere for sure. But it's a vibe. It's a vibe for sure. And what happened <laughs> to the beach inspired by, shall I say, California in parts, as that is where the album in a, a large part was recorded, but also a lot of the, the the stuff was written back in the UK in a lot of situations by beaches. So this is, this is uh, anyway, February the 9th, people can discover what happened to the beach. Okay. Uh, because there's not really a clear answer for it just yet. You said it was recorded partially in California. Where? Where in California? L.A. Oh, um, okay. I know. Disappointing. Very. Uh, you know, I'm from the Bay Area, San okay, Francisco. Yeah, so no, I didn't make it to. But I, I, I'll admit that L.A. Southern California beaches are a little better and uh, more yeah, majestic. Probably. And yeah. Warmer. I mean, to be honest, I spent like two months there in like January, February. So it's a, it was a good time, but it wasn't like the water's still a little a bit cold. Um, but that's what I'm used to anyway. Um, but I, I did manage to make it to like Malibu a couple of times mm. over the times I was there. And that is pretty cool. Lots of, lots of beaches out there. Um, go surfing or anything. No, I can't really surf. I'm, j I'm I need to learn. I'm trying, Boy. I'm trying to. What happened to the beach? <laughs> What happened to the ocean? What happens? What happened to the waves? I I have I've bodyboarded. Okay, that's a start. I have I have been on a surfboard like one time. So you know how to catch a wave at the very least. I wouldn't I wouldn't go that far, but yeah. <laughs> I, well, I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm, I'm sure there'll be a few more singles that'll come out before yeah, the actual be. release. And I'm I'm very excited about it too. I think I think think it's gonna be you know. It's just a new step and a new new thing for people to to dive into, and I think. Do you think it'll be weirder? Really Do you think it. that you'll explore, or I guess it's already recorded? Does does it explore uh, more Sonics in, in terms of oh, experimentation? Oh, so yeah, it's different from the other albums for sure. It's like more more of a digital recording process, more stuff from my like demos sort of brought into the world, like more um, 
yeah, more wonkiness, more just like intimate feeling, I think as well. Like, you know, a lot of stuff that I just kind of did once and then didn't, didn't repeat and have just kind of, um, yeah, it's got like the little rough edges because of it, but it also, I think has more like emotion for it as well. And like, hmm. I, yeah, I, I think it feels really, really cool. I think. Uh, Was this more intentional or more inspirational? uh i don't know it's like did you come in with the concept right uh, i yeah more, more like inspired i guess like more like in the moment i think that was kind of what i was trying to do i i definitely had certain things that i picked up along the way in, in terms of how i wanted it to sound or what i wanted to the kind of you know palette i wanted to work with but i think with the writing and recording so intertwined as as i sort of did this record yeah it was kind of um about capturing things in the moment and not really planning ahead too much. Um, I think was the kind of vibe of this one. Okay. We made a lot of music. So there's like, you know, 11 full tracks on the album, but um, there's a lot of other ones sitting around now as well, which are also really cool because there were, you know, a lot of experiments, a lot of different songs in the mix for quite a while, uh, quite deep into making the album. So yeah. Wow. It was a, it was a very, very creative time. I think it was like getting let out into the world and then just going for it, you know, and having stuff built up already. And yeah. Yeah. And nothing works is, is a taste of that, of course. You think yeah. the sound is consistent? No. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> no. I Yes. And no, like stuff does have the sound. Like nothing works does kind of have the, the sound palette of the record to an extent, but it's a lot of the record is actually a lot more chill than that. I would okay. say is is what they said. There's another. There's like one other like rock song on the album, and that's it. Like everything else is somewhat chiller. Interesting. Interesting. So, yeah. Especially during this time, I feel like there was a lot of anxiety, a lot of different emotions over the last three years, and now that we're kind of settling, mm. people are a little more free and kind of chill. And and and. Well, yeah, I think. I just def definitely was thinking a lot about, you know, well, we were all just like having such an intense time not too long ago. And I think what I was really drawn to creatively was stuff that just gave me an escape and a release. And like, that's it almost like sitting at home for such a long time. I almost felt like a child again, making or even just a teenager, like sat at home making music kind of just for fun. And like, just really appreciated that for what it was and like that kind of just led to the album really i didn't want to mess with that sort of ethos um because i felt like i was halfway there yeah um with it once we kind of got out of all the lockdowns and stuff so yeah i really just made an album that, that feels good and not that it's void of emotions outside of chill like it's definitely not it's definitely got some you know stuff that's a little heavier than that but um the album itself is quite abstract and quite like yeah <laughs> chilled out <laughs> it's not it's not intense in the way that zeros you know was a very yeah intense full throttle record like it's full throttle in other ways but like actually kind of chill <laughs> interesting and i like how you say it's wonky so wonky and chill really don't go together in, in oh, a lot of regards do. oh they do because wonky to me sounds like it's it's chaos it's unpredictable uh, yeah and it could be wild and but like things can like be chill and kind of warble like I think t to be really chill, you have to like go with the flow, right? Except the, except the little blemishes and things. It's not like chaos going all over the place, but it's like little little blemishes, little like bits of, um, you know, the sound kind of just like rolling around and 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 moving freely. Like that's 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 wonky and and a little goofy. And uh, I think that's all part of truly truly embracing chill is accepting the little blemishes. I, you know, I, I feel like if it was like chill and very without those sorts of things, it wouldn't feel, it would feel a little too thought, you know, premeditated, like we were kind of saying, like, and it just wasn't really an album that felt right to be like that. And um, yeah. Awesome. I'm looking forward to it. No, yeah, thanks. And I wanna... Me too. I, I'm really excited to get it out. Oh, now we got some music. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I've been waiting for a long time to get out, so very excited for that. Yeah. Well, I'm excited about your set as well. Appreciate the time. Great to see you, man. Yeah, great to see you, as always. Yeah. It's Declan McKenna, 
at ACL with B-Sides.